Hey there, all you have cats, cool kittens, you guys and dolls, you diesel-powered disciples of cool. It is time once again for Comic Stravaganza Live from the Houdini Room at the Casa de Cool. I am your host, the time-traveling comic book loving diesel pump, prophet pop culture, Big Daddy Cool, Johnny Del Rocca, swinging solid with the cosplay bombshell kitten. Tina Vida, and we are brought to you by BDC Entertainment, GraphicPolicy.com, also Cosplay Collective, The Unlockable Characters, and Comic City Conventions. It's supposed to fade out by right now, but it's not. There we go. There we got the fade. I was about to say it was pretty loud. Yeah, that got pretty loud. Yeah, it was supposed to fade out, not not get louder. <laughs> anyway, we are Comic Stravaganza Live, and we are without Leanna tonight. Darth Lee is on the road, on her way to Alabama. And uh, but you know Alabama. what? Alabama. You know what though? We are here, Miss Tina Vita. And do you know what today is? What's today? Today is a seminal day in pop culture history, in magic history, because today is Harry Houdini's birthday. Woo! Woo! Yes, so we are celebrating Harry Houdini's birthday, and uh, I might do a little trick that Harry Houdini oh, made famous a little bit later on. Cards, so. A little bit later on. Now, Tonight we're going to have a good time. We got some extra special guests with us tonight. We got a lot of news, a lot of new comics to talk about. But we actually have a little bit of a sad story tonight. Are you going to tell them already? Yeah, yeah. yeah, we're gonna, we're, yeah why not? Okay. That way they can savor every minute. And it doesn't, like, at the end they're not like, well, I wish I had known. I would have savored that more. <laughs> I can replay it. They could, they could. <laughs> Tonight, unfortunately, is Tina Vita's last night with us. Her other endeavors, her her modeling endeavors, her her other life interests are taking her in another direction. Now, don't worry though, she's still gonna be a bombshell kitten. So when you come see Big Daddy Cool and the Bombshell Kittens perform live on stage, there. you'll still still see her because let's face it. You're smoking hot, and you love magic. Yes. She's kind of a magic junkie. She she followed me around for a little while. It was pretty awesome. I was. I was like, how is he doing that? Yeah, like, yeah. There's something behind this. And you're still going to go with us to some conventions. You're still oh, yeah. going to be cosplaying with Cosplay Collective. Mm -hmm. It's just Wednesday nights. It's not going to be able to work hey, for you. Hey, and I could pop in every once in a while. Just, yeah, just once. To Weekly is yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're we are gonna we are gonna be on the hunt for a for a new co-host. No one can replace Tina Vita. No. But we do we are gonna be looking for someone to fill the spot. So so uh um I, I'm I'm sorry, brother Daniel, but you you ain't cute enough. I'm not arguing that one. No, minute. actually, actually, you are pretty oh, cute. Can make him cute enough. I, I can say that in all my heterosexual confidence. We have a very special guest here tonight um, to give us a cool report, maybe, maybe a bad report. We don't know, but last Monday was the sneak peek of Insurgent, the, uh, the second film in the Divergent series. You know, and that's kind of weird, isn't it? Divergent, insurgent. Anyway, um, Lionsgate Film got in touch with Comic Extravaganza Live and Cosplay Collective and said, hey, we, we want some help promoting this movie to um, the Nashville area. Mm -hmm. We're going to give you a, a block of free tickets to give away. Uh, it, was a, it was a theater, a whole theater. Theater. Yes, um, <laughs> over uh, at 100 Oaks. And... Um, so we're going to give you some swag and stuff and whatnot and, and help promote Insurgent. So we posted the links to get the free tickets, mm -hmm. to download them. And within an hour, one hour, they were all gone. So they... they you made them disappear, Johnny. We did. We did. So they called us and said, what did you guys do? And I was like, oh, we just posted it on our Facebook pages. And 
is like, well, we're going to have to do more for you, more with you. And so we're going to be doing more with Lionsgate Film as a partner. So we're excited about that. Heck yeah. That is there awesome. we go. Yeah. And all of the t-shirts that they sent, those were a huge hit at Mid-SouthCon. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Big Daddy Cool was uh, tossing them out into the audience. And uh, man, people were going bananas to get those shirts. Uh, and then, you know, we put out the poster. We had those big movie posters, the, uh -huh. the big 20 by 30 movie posters they yeah. sent. I, I put them out um, on the free merchandise table. 20 minutes. Gone. It wow. was crazy town. People were hungry for insurgent. So, um, Daniel, come on up here, brother. Gosh. I'm not even going to warm them up. Or no, 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 no. This is wow. this is our very special uh, film correspondent. Come over here. Right, right, where am I going? Right, right, oh, right no. between Where's us. It? Tina, you I came, go that way. Okay. You I'm come right tall. here. Okay. You oh, come there right you go. here. Yeah, now, um, you went and saw it. I wasn't able to go. I had a conflict come up, but you went in my place. Yes. Um, did you take a date? No, did not take a date. I was just kind of went straight from work. Oh, it's okay. right next to work. Yeah, yeah, it is so, right next door. Ran solo. It's okay. I'm fine with that. No big deal. So, okay, so tell us about insurgents. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm going to say this. I went into this not knowing anything about the storyline or anything. I went in blind, knew nothing. Um, I went in. I'd seen the trailer. I was like, okay, this looks interesting. I walk in, and all of a sudden, we go from Mackay Pfeiffer finding something and giving it to someone else. And they go off with it, and then we go to the main characters, uh, Triss and Number Four, I guess was the guy's name. I don't remember. Yes, Triss and Four um, are the main divergence. They're bouncing around, and then we find out, you know, that Number Four is the son of the leader of the Resistance and whatever. And so I'm sitting here watching this. It's like it's kind of like jumping into Star Wars and Empire Strikes Back. I'm completely lost. I, you know, I was worried about that because I I watched Divergent. This weekend, mm -hmm. um, and just to catch up on it, and uh, great first movie. The first movie was great, but I was worried that a sequel might be hard for people to get into if they don't see the first one. It's one of those that if you go into it knowing, if you haven't seen Divergent, if you go into it knowing there's a backstory that you have to catch up on. If you already have seen Divergent, you're going to be perfectly fine. The theater was full, people were cheering. I'm sitting here watching the film like, why are we cheering? I don't understand. It's a cool point in the movie. Cool little plot twists and everything. But I have, I'm have, i like, what's going on? I don't know. <laughs> well, it was but, the number one movie at the box office this yeah, past week. I saw that. It was like 300 something million or something. Yeah, like that. it, something it crazy. bumped Cinderella to number two. Mm -hmm. And Kingsman held on at number three. I need to see that. I have not seen that yet. Yeah, great. That's a, all that. three of those are great, right. great movies. So yeah. uh, would you recommend in, uh, Insurgent? Overall... I would recommend it. It's not something personally I'm going to rush out and buy. It's just not my thing. It's a good movie. It's good entertainment. Um, the special effects are good. The plot's good. Mm, character developments here and there. Whatever. Good movie. Go see it. I give it three and a half out of five. So, All right. Cool. We cool. Well, uh, we'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, you can uh, post it on our Facebook page. Uh, Comic Stravaganza Live, or send us an email, comicstravaganza at gmail.com. Let us know what you think about Insurgent and whether or not Daniel got it right or he's just out in left field somewhere. And if I, you think I didn't get it right, I don't care. I'm not worried about it. <laughs> Way to endear yourself to our fans <laughs> on your first time on the show. Get out of here. All right, Don't bye. bother me. Uh, and then there were two. Yes, there were. There were. And uh, anyway, anyway, we have some new comics to talk about. Um, today is New Comic Day, and uh, I actually went and bought some new comics today, but okay. I'm not going to talk about any of the ones that I actually bought. Huh. Because they're titles that I talk about just about every week. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. So I um, wanted to talk about some new stuff that. Uh, I find interesting, but I didn't pick up yet. They're on my pull list. Um, first of all, uh, the Shadow one shot, Altered States. Now, have we talked about the Altered States books yet? No, I did. We did. I had the Vampirella Altered States that oh, had her as a okay. space zombie or a space vampire. Um, this 
has Lamont Cranston, the shadow, being thrust forward into the future, but as a true spirit being. Okay. <laughs> so he truly is a shadow. Get it? <laughs> At least that's what I think happens. I haven't read it yet. But I, I, I flipped through the preview copy that, uh, that uh, Dynamite sent, mm -hmm. and um, that's the gist that I got. So, Far Future, Pulp Hero, Man Out of Time, that kind of thing. All right, The Black Hood. Now, you know, I wasn't familiar with this at all, and I, I, I saw it on the solicits this week, and the cover by uh, Frank Avia got my attention. Basically, it's a, a crime series where the, the Black Hood is actually the city's most fearsome, or no, I'm sorry, when you steal from the underworld, the underworld will come looking for you, even if you're a cop. So Black Hood is a cop in disguise, he's crossed the city's most fearsome drug lord, and um, yeah, it's uh, variant covers by um, David Mack and Howard Chaikin. Mm -hmm. And this cover is by Francesco Francavilla. Francavilla. All right. Rise. Like yeah, so I, uh, I sent this out to you guys today. Um, this is a brand new, um, a brand new book by Glad. And let me see, where's the info on this? Where, where did it go? Oh, here it is. Uh, Comics Against Bullying. Um, and uh, we all have a place where we belong. And this features an all-new story from Howard Chaikin, Mark Guggenheim, Guggenheim. Uh, Chris Robertson, Dennis Culver, Adam P. Nave, and uh, Jed Daughtry, and many more. And the proceeds... Uh, benefit organizations including GLAD, Prism Comics, and Stand for the Silent. So it's all about anti-bullying. I like that. I like how right there she's a superhero. Right there she's looking kind of sad. Yeah, yeah. So that's Rise number one. This is a book that we're uh, putting our support behind as a show. So if, uh, if you find it on your shelf or if your local store doesn't have it, please ask them to get it. Um, because the proceeds go to a great cause that we want to we want to support. All right, it's back to the 80s with Jem and the Holograms. Woo so this is by IDW. It's a tie-in to the movie that's coming out this summer. And what, what? 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 What is it about? It's Jem <laughs> and the Holograms. Are you saying you, you, you just you just repeated what you just? All right. Two seconds ago. It's you know what? It's interesting that this is coming out by IDW because it was actually produced by Marvel Animation back in the eighties. But it's about a, a rock band called Gem and the Holograms. Yeah. That's. I mean, what else okay. do you need to know? It's do like they... Anna Montana from way back when. It's fashion, art, action, and style. Secret identity. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Anyway, there you go. Pastaways, number one. These are time traveling adventures from the future who have been stranded in our present, their past. And uh, kind of a neat concept, although I gotta tell you, I picked it up today at the shop to flip through it. Mm -hmm. I'm not real wild about the artist. Um, this is an artist who has done um, a lot of work for Marvel, Scott Collins, and I, he did a run on the Avengers that I was never really thrilled with. But it's 2015, the distant past, and a crash landing strands five deep time explorers in a primitive world of internal combustion engines and internet 1.0 and tears a rift in time-space that spouts dinosaurs, giant robots, and other strange phenomena. So, the Pastaways. Dun, dun, dun. 
And this one I'm really excited about. Um, I almost, I almost put down my shekels for this today, but I only had six of those shekels, so I had to be really picky. Um, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad number one. This is the third in a series from the collaboration of Disney and Marvel. Um, Big Thunder Railroad, or Big, yeah, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad is a ride at Disney World. Mm -hmm. And um, Marvel, like they did with Figment and like they did with um, uh, uh, Seekers of the Weird, are producing a series based on that. So it's basically um, Bruckheimer in comic book form. You know, Jerry Bruckheimer. Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. Yeah. Pirates of the Caribbean was a ride at Disney World uh -huh. that they adapted into a movie. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> hey. Speaking of Pirates of the Caribbean, which, you know, they're on number five now, um, filming that, and Johnny Depp was injured. Um, Johnny Depp plays Captain Jack Sparrow. Mm -hmm. But do you know that he's also going to be playing the title role in The Secret Life of Harry Houdini, America's no. first superhero. It's a new movie that's coming out next year, and it's based on the biography by Bill Kalish. And uh, Bill Kalish uncovered um, diaries and letters that um, uncovered the fact that Harry Houdini was a secret agent for the American uh, Secret Service and British MI6. He was James Bond. He was a king's man before it was a thing. Yeah, it's, it's, cool. it's very fascinating. The book, Secret Life of Harry Houdini, awesome book. And Johnny Depp from Pirates of the Caribbean mm -hmm. will be playing Harry Houdini. And that's uh, pretty cool news on Houdini Day. You see what I did there? I brought it all full circle. You did. I was don't, impressed. Don't try this at home, kids. I am a trained professional. All right. So uh, I talked about Mid-South Con. Uh, real quick, just a quick review. It was awesome. I was awesome. We got a new bombshell kitten. Um, uh, I see Brianna, <laughs> Yeah, Brianna is playing uh, Cherry DeVille. And uh, she helped me out on stage. We spent a couple hours rehearsing. It was awesome. Uh, she was great. And um, the audience was fantastic. We threw out t-shirts. We did some new material from Swinging at the Roxy that uh, I haven't done there before. And uh, then I did a bunch of panels, diesel punk, steampunk, um, costuming panels. Do they have that fandom in my size? Which was a hugely attended panel. People nice. wanted to know why they don't make clothes and, and t-shirts and whatnot in larger sizes. Mm. And I told them why. Do you want to know why? I want to know why. It's an ugly truth, but it is true. Movie studios, TV studios, merchandisers want their product to be represented by a certain type of person. By, by the teeny, beautiful people. Like you. Hey, hey, bigger people can be... So beautiful. I know. I mean, here I am. You are but gorgeous. I am. I am. I, I gotta say so myself. Um, and I've only seen myself on video. So uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> one of the cool things to come out of Mid South Con was uh, my buddy Wofford got me this gift. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. You remember the movie Alien? Yes. You have seen that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Here, here's my impression of, of a scene from Alien. Ready? Here we go. All right. Hold on. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, this is the reaction figure uh, from Funko, the alien reaction figure. And of course, these are made like the three and three quarter inch scale Star Wars 77 figures. Mm -hmm. And you know, my friend Woffer gave it to me. And he said, here, because I know you like these. I said, I know these are awesome. And he goes, yeah, I hate them. I'm like, oh, so you're just giving this to me because you hate it. He's like, no, no, I know you like them. I was like, how can you hate these? They're just like, and he said, no, they're not going to like them. And I'm like, are you kidding me? All right, look. Hold, hold it up to the camera sideways. Because this body sculpt is basically 
Hammerhead. The, the Hammerhead character from the Star Wars action figure line just re-sculpted. It is, it is the body. So anyway, um, I got this. There's a whole new line coming out. Big Trouble in Little China uh, line coming out. Oh, what did I see today? Uh, there's another whole new line from Funko coming out in the Reaction series. Oh, that's going to drive me crazy. I saw it just today and I was so excited. No, I don't no. remember. They already I'm did so the rocket. Yeah, I saw that. I didn't yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyway, um, hey, I'm not sure. <sighs> you'll see in a moment. I <laughs> love everything that she wears. <laughs> we're, we're of course talking about the lovely and talented. And mythical <laughs> Amy Sulam. Um, hey, before we get to our final guests for the night and uh, call it a night, mm -hmm. um, we have a new giveaway coming up. Ooh. Yes, so uh, we've teased this uh, over the last couple of weeks, but we are finally going to do a drawing for Batman Death in the Family. This is the famous storyline where Robin, Jason Todd, is killed by the Joker and uh, was the springboard uh, for so many stories afterwards. But uh, seminal, seminal collection of the uh, Batman, A Death in the Family um, series. And we're going to give this away. Now, here's how people can win. How? Tell me. We, Tell me all about it, we, we, we did this before. Um, for every like on Comic Stravaganza Live, you get one entry. For every comment, you get two. And for every share, you get five. Now, here's the caveat. Only on Comic Stravaganza Live. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Before we did it across it all of our websites, and oh my gosh, I was insane to do that. Because someone had to tally it all up right and and okay. that was me and I'm sitting there with with index cards going through 12 different Facebook pages and writing down names for entries and I, it was insane I'm not doing that again I love you but I'm not doing that again so uh, Comic Extravaganza Live like share comment each like gets one entry each share gets two each comment or each comment gets two, each share gets five. I was like, wait, what? So uh, the more you interact with our page, the more likely you are to have your name drawn. Just ask Kurt Kanzler and um, Crystal Gale Coffee. They were two of our winners from the last drawing. And they comment and share like crazy people. So they, they got, you know, they were like, a lot of entries. Hey, be our stalkers. Go right ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my stalker, my stalker, wherever he goes, wherever I go, he's gonna go. You remember that toy? You don't remember this. When I was a kid, there was a, my buddy, my buddy, wherever I go, he's gonna go. So I just tuned it to stalker. Gotcha. You got a couple of stalkers, don't you? Do you need some? I, I know some either. guys I that I can. Any. No, no, no. I'm sure Amy knows a few that she could uh, send her way. I got some really interesting messages this week on Facebook from a guy who wants to get me pregnant. <laughs> I'll send him your way, Tina. Wow. <laughs> and and that's, on, that's, that. that's on camera. All right, so uh, <laughs> we got some special guests with us, some cosplay guests. Um, give it up for Tori and Addie. Addie. <laughs> Step on in here. Step on in here. You don't... Yeah, okay, good. We're all clustered in. All right. Which one is Tori? Which one is Addie? Tori. You're Tori. You're okay. Addie. Now, you... How did we meet Tori and Addie? They were sent to us. By whom? That, that's her department. And then that... By Cosplay Collective. By Cosplay okay, yeah. Cosplay Collective sent you to us. Yes. And that's Dee and Nancy, of course, and they're going to be hosting the Cosmetality Suite at MTAC next weekend. We'll talk more about that before you go. But, um, so, so, you're coming to us. I don't, you're doing anime characters. Yeah. Now, Tina Vita, do you know anything about anime? Yes. 
Do you know who these characters are? Because I don't know anything. I know. I know which. I know I've seen them before. I can't name them. Okay. That is, yeah. That, that's no disrespect to you. No, I just no. don't watch anime. So who are you? Who are you cosplaying uh, as? I am the amazing Black Star, and this is my wonderful weapon, Subaki from Soul Eater. Wait, Chewbacca? What? Subaki. <laughs> <laughs> it means morning. Okay, in in Japanese. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what is the anime that these characters are from? Uh, this is from Soul Eater, which is kind of like a twist wait, on Soul wait, Eater. Soul Eater. Yeah, those right. are two words <laughs> for those of you who are living outside the Middle Tennessee area. In Tennessee, Soul Eater. One word. Outside of Tennessee, Soul Eater. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. yes. Exactly. We just got to I that heard it clear. completely fine from her mouth. All right, what are you saying? Um, anyway, Soul Eater, and that's an anime? Yes. yes. Yep. And what is the anime about? It's kind of like a twist on the classic high school anime scene, but uh, there's a certain species of humans that can turn into weapons, and the humans that can't are using these weapons to compete and become Death's Scythe. This is what I watch. Which is pretty cool. It, it's so. confusing. Animes give me seizures. <laughs> anyway, and grandma's over there going, me too! <laughs> uh, so, so you become a weapon. Yes, she what? turns into, uh, at first she was a pair of cha and chain blades that you could it was swing like and do cool like, stuff like that. And scythes okay. on a chain. And yeah. then she's able to transform also into a black katana. Okay, and, and so like this... How does that work exactly? I really don't. They never actually I mean, does, explain that in the no, series. No magic. So, <laughs> so like, do you maintain? Does the character maintain its personality and yes. yeah, memories and mm -hmm. and just like the only difference? Hey, is you're squeezing me too tight. Yeah. you know. Yeah, they're, they can still talk. Yeah. When the only difference is that for some reason, when their reflection shows up in the blade, they're naked. Which, Which actually really kind weird. of makes sense. Yeah, but it's just But the weird, weird part is, when they're in weapon form, it. they're naked. But when they come back into human form, they have clothes. Totally clothed. I don't get it. I There's a it. lot in that series that's not explained. Yeah. yeah. Like the first three episodes. It's a little bit dirty, I think. <laughs> you should try, you <laughs> should try watching it. You should try watching Saikon no Quijin. No, I'm, tell I'm being serious. They make me nauseous. Anime makes me physically ill. I can't watch it. It's I'm, the, I'm sure she can relate. Really, I don't like it. What's that? Not all like it. Everyone I've seen is. So it's anyways. a pretty good one. There are some that are definitely worth it. <laughs> anyway, no, it's been that way since I was a kid. Uh, you know, I, when, when I was watching, like, you remember, uh, no, you don't remember, Battle of the Planets, Voltron. I would always get a headache, and I never understood why until I was older, and I was like, oh, that's it. It's the jerky frames just... It's a lot of people suffer from this. Don't look at me like I'm some kind of. I'm judging you. Some kind of leper I'm or something. That's you yeah, your last night on the show, chick. So watch. It. <laughs> um, anyway, so you got? Are you guys going to be at MTAC? Well, we were going to have the whole group, but unfortunately, ticket sales went kaput, and uh, myself and Rachel, Rachel and I are the co-founders. Rachel couldn't be here tonight. Rachel and I will be there Friday and Saturday. Uh, Wait, what do you mean ticket sales went kaput? We were originally supposed to go on Saturday because that was the day that everyone was supposed to be there and then Saturday tickets went out and some of the people in our cosplay group can't afford the two-day tickets. Yeah. So, so they sold out and, okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Okay, that's important to know because they're sold out on Saturday, apparently. Yeah, apparently. So you have a group. Yes. What is the name of the group? We are City Bound Cosplay. Uh, that's... City bound is one word, and then cosplay is the second word. We have a Facebook page. You can look us up. It's awesome. And, and she set it up, too. Yeah. So. Awesome. Oh. Awesome. She's in charge of promotional stuff. Yeah. yeah. There you go. All right. Excellent. Excellent. So, uh, city bound yes. cosplay. Yes. And do you only do anime characters? No, we're uh, we're actually planning Steven Universe in the future uh, and Five Nights at Freddy's. Which still that. technically counts that. as animation. It's a video game. It's really anime. Which is going to be difficult because we have to make fully but, functional but movies, movies, comics. Um, we're trying to pull together an Avengers cosplay, which hasn't worked out for us so far because some of the costumes are really intricate. Mm -hmm. um, but we're trying to work on that. I get to be lucky. 
Cool. All right, cool, cool. Well, City Bound Cosplay, Tori and Addie, give it up for them. Thank you guys for coming out. Check out their fan, uh, fan page on Facebook. And uh, when you see them at MTAC, say, I saw you on Comic Stravaganza Live. Uh, Saturday or Friday, I'm going to be dressed as Japan from Hitalia. And then, yeah. No. Nice. And then, uh, um, Saturday, I'm going to be dressed as Tamaki from Oran High School Post Club, and Rachel will be dressed as Kyo. You will be. Rachel's not going to be with me on Friday, but she'll be running around dressed as Nami from One Piece. All right, cool deal. So you cool can come deal. find us. City Bound Cosplay. Give it when, up for me. When I time. cosplay uh, for Italia, I'm going to be uh, Italy. She's Italy. All right, there you go. Uh, I <laughs> make her very tall. <laughs> well, Luckily, our Germany's leaning tower of yeah. Pisa. <laughs> Italy. <laughs> All right, all right. So uh, anyway, thank you guys for being here. Thank you. And uh, we appreciate it. All right, before we uh, you can exit that way. Right, Excellent. Of, thank you. Why did you just like push them off the stage? Well, you know, buddy. you know, they, they came, they did their thing. Now it's time to go. <laughs> I love you, mean it. Goodbye. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um. Anyway, we got some upcoming events. Uh, you can see us. Uh, at MTAC, April 3rd through the 5th. Is that right? 3rd through yes. the 5th? Yeah, yeah. Um, here in Nashville, uh, the Cosplay Collective, which we're a part of, mm -hmm. is going to be hosting the Cosmetality Suite. Now, check this out. We, we've said this time and time again, but I was pitching this really hard at Mid-South Con for some mm -hmm. other cons that were there. And everyone is just wild about this idea. If you're a cosplayer and you need to rest, recharge, or repair. Where do you normally have to go? <laughs> the to bathroom. A bathroom, <gasps> uh, your hotel room, to your car, maybe all the way back home to a friend's house because you forgot something. Mm -hmm. Well, the Cospitality Suite solves that problem. Because we have a area, and th in this, at MTAC, it is a suite. It yeah. is a real room where you can come and, and, and you can, you know, sit down, you can get away from the cameras, you can just chill out for a while. But more importantly, if you have a wardrobe malfunction mm -hmm. and you need something to be fixed, repaired, or even minor alterations, D and Nancy have a whole setup. Sewing machines needles and thread because you gotta have thread for a sewing machine um they got they got hot glue guns they got tape they got paint they got foam i mean everything that a cosplayer could ever want or need mm -hmm. you could probably build the costume from scratch with what they have in the cosmetality suite and um so we're, we're gonna be there and and manning that for all of the uh the con and uh, we want to meet you. We want you to come, enjoy the suite, enjoy what we have for you, and um, say hi. And, and are you you're going to join us? You're going to be there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So you can come see Tina Vita. You can Tina see Vita. me again. Yes, yes, yes. So even, now look, even though Tina's not going to be on the show every Wednesday night, she's still going to be with us at events mm -hmm. as much as possible. And um, when you see dates for Big Daddy Cool and the uh, Bombshell Kittens, she'll be with us. Um, and we got some tour dates coming up. Do we really? Yeah, we're booking them pretty fast now. Okay. Yeah, I've got news I to share. It. I was like, oh, I, don't I know, I know, I know. It seemed like nothing was going on, but there's there's some good stuff coming up. And um, actually, you're gonna be doing some more photo shoots real soon, aren't you? Yes. Yes. Head, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I am. And you, I, you gotta be a fan of her Facebook page. Keep up with her because she posts those awesome pics and. It's awesome. It's just awesome. <laughs> now I'm a little bit sad, though. Because I'm not going to see you every Wednesday night. You can ask me to come every once in a while. Because I need a break sometimes. I know you do. We all do. We all do. We all do. So uh, that'll be great. Um, all right. Well, what's after that? April 11th, Danbridge Towers uh, Cosplay Collective is going to be there. I'm going to be performing at Mule Days in Columbia. Um, and then later that night for a uh, charity event. So there's, we're all over the place. We are all over the place. And then in June, we want to give a shout out to our friends at Indie PopCon. Um, they're going to be uh, the first weekend of June. And if you're in the Indianapolis area, 
you went the last weekend in June. And if you're in the Indianapolis uh, area, you want to check them out. Uh, we had a great time there last year, and uh, they're going to be really, really awesome. So uh, with that, we're going to say good night. And what? I I had an article, Johnny. You you didn't tell me. Oh, oh yes, I did. Yes, Ladies I did. and gentlemen, I swear I did. Tina Vita with her article. What's going on? So, I'm sorry. I told you before the show. <laughs> yeah, I'm too much of a narcissist to pay attention. <laughs> All right, so guys, Slenderman, the new arrival just came out today. Uh, if you are a fan, I would highly suggest getting it now. They're on promotion, seven dollars instead of ten. And so. Wait, what, so what is this? Slender Man. I know Slender Man, but... Slender Man The Arrival. It's the n n newest game. It's a video game? Yeah. All right. And on what platform? Uh, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. And, and is it good? Yeah, I actually played it on my phone uh, last year. It was... Graphics was all right. I kind of got the gist. It's, it's a horror uh, video game. I like it, though. A horror, right? It, it's about a, basically a character that will stalk you and watch you, and then he's going to murder you. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> it is all, yeah, you're a little bit creepy there. All right, before we go, I do want to do one real quick thing. Um, it is Houdini Day, and uh, in honor of the late, great Houdini, we're just uh, going to do a quick, uh, quick demonstration. If you were playing a game of poker, which card would you want in your hand? An ace. An ace? Like the Ace of Spades? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how gamblers can control the Ace of Spades. This is why you can never win against a professional gambler. Check this out. The Ace of Spades goes down here uh -huh. in the middle. You see plainly where it is. Okay. Now watch this. Did you see that happen? What happened? You didn't see it happen? No. It came right back to the top. Now, now watch. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to take the ace of spades. goes down here in the middle. Go ahead and push it in. Perfect. Now watch. See it happen? Yeah. yeah. Right sure, back sure. to the top. Just like that. Oh, you know what? Here, we'll, we'll do it a little bit more complicated. We'll actually bury it way down in there. You can see it in there, right? Mm -hmm. I just messed this up on live TV, by the way. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I gotta see where it is. I gotta. <laughs> I, I gotta. <laughs> no, I just. I got. I gotta count the cards. I gotta count the cards. Here we go. We're gonna do one, two, three. Hopefully that did it. Let's see if we brought it back to the top with just a couple of shuffles. No, I missed it. It's the three of hearts. No, wait, wait. Watch, watch, watch. Even, even when a gambler misses. Check this out. By using a little bit of magic, because magic and gambling are not the same thing, he can bring that ace ah! right back to the top, just like magic. Very nice. Very nice, Johnny. Woo! Woo! You guys, that's it for this week. Comic Extravaganza Live on behalf of Tina Vita. I am Big Daddy Cool Johnny Della Rocca telling you to swing hard, swing often. We'll catch you on the flip side.